Hello everyone, my name is Silverback. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video uh, from what my normal content would be. Today we're actually going to be talking about the RTX 40 series and a lot of just, you know, some some of the speculation around it and some of the, some of the conspiracy theories surrounding the, this new generation. I, I, I have a few thoughts on the matter and, you know, so... Let's just, you know, let's get right into it. So first off, the uh, the 4090, uh, here we can see they are going to be releasing the RTX 4090, RTX 4080, RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. Now the CUDA core count on the 4090 is significantly higher than last generation, uh, up from, I believe, 10,500 10, something to 16,384. That is definitely a very significant jump. Uh, and CUDA core from the 3090 to the 4090. Uh, so I do expect the 4090 to be quite a powerhouse, quite a beast in the gaming arena or, you know, uh, content creation, whatever, you know, your use case may be. Uh, now the 4080, uh, surprisingly, does have less CUDA cores than the 3090, but I do expect it to probably be maybe a little bit faster just because the clock speeds are significantly higher this generation. Uh, compared to last generation. Last generation, the clock speeds usually maxed out at around 2000 megahertz. Uh, you you know, of course with liquid nitrogen, you could get pretty high clock speeds, but I mean, that's not gonna be a normal use case now, is it? So uh, now as you can see, the RTX 4880 12 gigabyte with 7,680 CUDA cores actually has the highest boost clock out of all uh, of the 40 series that have been released so far. Now, this that's just because uh, usually lower SKUs are able to boost higher uh, because of this lower CUDA core count, uh, both for like heat reasons. Uh, I'm not going to act like I know everything about these cards and, and that I know all of the technical aspects because I don't. Uh, I also do know that the 4090's power uh, peaks at 450 watts. Um, now, this is actually a little bit better than I was expecting considering that the, I believe the 3090 Ti's power rating peaked at around, or was it 350 watts? I believe it was 450 watts for the 3090 Ti, um, which, it, which, you know, really isn't as bad as I was expecting. I mean, however, a lot of, you know, systems, electrical systems in houses are going to have a hard time dealing with um, these higher power cards. Uh, I actually had to move my whole setup across my room because the whatever circuit I was using on the uh, other side of my house was literally tripping the breaker and I was only using I was only using a 3080 at the time I now have a 3090 but uh, luckily this you know when I moved the system over to this side of my house the breaker was able to handle the power difference but yeah that was <laughs> you know just to show you how how much power these cards are drawing I literally had to move my whole setup because my you know I guess one of the lines in my house, which my house is a little bit older, wasn't able to handle it. Um, now the 4080 12 gigabyte, it has most of the controversy uh, of the 40 series so far. Pretty much a lot of people think the 4080 12 gigabyte was, should have been the 4070, which I, I, I honestly completely agree. Considering the CUDA core count um, and the VRAM numbers and that in early leaks, a lot of the, uh, I believe this is this was the 8080 104 die. Um, this this was depicted as the 4070 in early leaks and then Nvidia changed it to the 4080 most likely to increased profit margin to sell their cards for more if somebody sees 4080 on a box at a micro center if they see 4080 12 gigabyte versus 4080 16 gigabyte they might think oh i don't need 16 gigabytes of vram but they're kind of they're they're misleaded in the fact that they don't actually know that the die is a cut down version uh, from 4080 to 4080, all they're going to be seeing is 4080 on the box. Therefore, they might think it's the same card, just lower VRAM. Uh, and as you can imagine, that that you know, a lot of problems can arise from that. Um, especially considering, I believe that the MSRP is $899 for the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte, which is kind of absurd, considering that this most likely should have been a 4070 series card. Um, now, we have a couple of other interesting and exciting things to talk about re regarding some of the new technologies that are coming to 40 series, I will admit. It really does sadden me that um, that a lot of these technologies are not going to be coming to 30 series. Hope maybe in the future they will. But, you know, will, will you be missing out that much if you have a 3080 or 3090? Mm, probably not. I mean, I just upgraded my 3080 and I... I had a great experience with it. I I got great great frame rates in whatever games I played, whether it was Warzone, yeah, just really really anything I ever played. I, I never had a problem with it. Now I have a 3090, and I, still, of course, it's even better, and you know, it's it's fantastic. Um, so, will people really be inclined to upgrade their 3080 or 3090? 
uh, if they if they feel content with the performance that they're getting at the time, even if you can get significantly better performance, eh, probably not. Um, but as you can see, the 40, 4090 does look like a beast. Um, you, uh, we're going to have 1,400 uh, tensor cores, uh, 300 optical flow accelerators. Um, we're going to get in, in more into that in a, just in, in a little bit. Um, 200 ray tracing cores, 90, 90 shader execution units. And so as you can see, they're also claiming that the 40 series is more power efficient than the 30 series, which is probably true. However, the power, the power draw is going up. It, it's not <laughs> just, just cause it's more power efficient does not mean that power draw is going to go down. It's, it, it's still going up from, I believe 300, 350 Watts to 450 Watts. Um, but it, it, they are predicting a two to four times performance increase. However, I do not think that is, it is going to be nearly that much. I think maybe with DLSS three, it will be that much, but, um, is everyone going to be using DLSS three, especially if you have a 4090? Probably not. So let's see third generation ray tracing cores. Now this is actually pretty cool because, um, shader execution reordering so pretty much uh, apparently what they're doing um i don't know exactly how this works but but from from this little image depiction uh it looks like the original ray tracing executions uh would would be done out of order so i guess uh different parts of a map that are being ray traced versus another one would be done at the same time whereas maybe um what it looks like is they are going to be ray tracing uh specific I guess, uh, sectors or whatever at the same time to make it more efficient. And, and apparently, uh, it's two times the performance, which is actually a very big, uh, jump. Now, uh, once again, do I think that the 30 series wouldn't be able to do this? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't really see why they wouldn't be able to, but you know, then again, what do I know? <laughs> so, um, fourth generation tensor cores. And as you can see, the, the 4090 does have significantly more tensor cores than the 3090 Ti, which, uh, I believe the tensor cores are going to help out quite a bit with, uh, DLSS three. And, um, of course you also saw on the graph, the, the optical flow accelerators, I believe it was. Uh, if I go back up here, I believe it was 200 or 300 optical flow accelerators. Um, so pretty much with the optical flow accelerators, um, what, what they're planning on doing, uh, from what my understanding is, um, if you're, when you're playing a game, they're going to increase FPS by taking a frame and taking the next frame and filling in what the middle, like they're, they're going to try to guesstimate what the middle frame would be. So um, instead of taking the first frame and then just guessing what the next frame would be, um, which would most likely be inaccurate, you'd probably get, I don't know if you'd probably get artifacts, you'd probably get, you know, problems with textures and stuff. Um, but the problem with DLSS3 is that it's going to significantly increase latency. And uh, that's not just me saying that, that if we go right down here, um, NVIDIA Reflex removes, sig removes significant latency from the game rendering pipeline by removing the render queue and more tightly synchronizing the CPU and GPU. So, um, what, one other cool aspect of DLSS3 is that it can actually potentially alleviate bottlenecks that you may have, may have, uh, whether it's on the, uh, GPU or CPU side where pretty much, uh, before in DLSS, DLSS 2.0, um, it, it only really alleviated the GPU side, um, but because the CPU uh, with DLSS3 will be kind of taken out of the pipeline for a lot of the frames being rendered, um, it, 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 you will potentially be able to get significantly higher frame rates even if your CPU wasn't able to output those frame rates because they are being rendered on the GPU itself and not on the CPU, uh, which is very cool, but once again, it does increase latency. Now they do can't claim that uh, Nvidia Reflex removes significant latency because you do have higher FPS. The game will look smoother. It, it will look look smoother, but but you will not just because you have a higher FPS does not mean that your latency will be lower, which would normally be the case. Normally, if you have higher FPS, your latency will be lower. Uh that's that's how it's always been really um, now he also goes into talking about DLSS three and how pretty much Ampere will will not be able to run DLSS three. Apparently, he claims uh, that DLSS three is laggy, has bad image quality, it doesn't boost FPS, uh, and that that would be if you were to use it on a um, on a Ampere graphics card. 
So uh, he, he's claiming that, that it, it wouldn't work very well on the 3000 series. Do I believe that? Uh, you know, considering <laughs> NVIDIA's marketing, I, I don't really know. I think that they're kind of just trying to have certain technologies kept just to the 4000 series to increase sales um because at the way that it's looking right now so many people have 3000 series and such an overflow 3000 series uh there there's going to be small there, there's not going to be very very large incentive for somebody to switch from 3000 series to 4000 series at least how with how things are looking right now and i would really love to for them to release dlss 3 to the 3000 series so that the consumer can uh decide whether or not it, it does produce bad image quality or it, it does you know feel laggy um, I, I would like for the consumer to be able to decide and not, you know, a large corporation. That'd be nice. He also, he did say that DLSS 3 could potentially, potentially become compatible with RTX 2000 and 3000. Now, considering that he said that, I, I, I have a feeling that, you know, DLSS 3 probably could run on, you know, 2000 or 3000 series, considering that he, he included 2000. Um, if the, you know, if the optical flow accelerators were so much slower on 2000 or 3000 series, then why did you include potentially DLSS 3 coming to 2000 and 3000 instead of just 3000, if you understand what I'm trying to say there. Now, another really cool uh, thing that NVIDIA is bringing to the table. Also, um, now NVIDIA has AV1 encoders. So um, I, I, I do believe that was one thing that Intel had uh, like an upper hand with. Uh, not anymore. Uh, yeah, until you kind of kind of missed your mark. You know, if you would have released those GPUs maybe about uh, two years ago, you might have had something something to go on. But considering that you know Intel Arc is just now being released, it's kind of a little too late. Intel, sorry, man. Uh, and now here they they claim that the GeForce RTX 4090 will have two times the performance of the RTX 3090 Ti. Do I believe that? Uh, that could definitely be just a little marketing claim that you know just to create hype around the 40 series um con considering that the that the CUDA core count is definitely not double the 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 3090 ti even though it is significantly higher it's not double uh, and the clock speeds are higher but do i think that it's going to be double the performance of a 3090 ti uh, that's kind of a uh, that's kind of a stretch i think maybe when the 4090 ti comes out and they max out the um 80102 die, I believe it would be with 18,000 CUDA cores. Um, maybe at that point it will be double the 3090 Ti, but do I believe that at this point in time? Eh. Uh, we will, you know, only time will tell. We'll have to see once reviewers get hands on these cards and, and, you know, they're able to test them. Uh, all right. So the last thing we are going to be talking about today is RTX Remix, which is really exciting. I'm, this is the one thing about for the 4,000 series that I'm actually extremely excited about. Um, now, as you can see, um, pretty much there's RTX on, uh, I believe this is the Elder Scroll Scrolls three Morrowind. Um, so this would be the game before using RTX Remix, um, and Remix is going to be used by a lot of modders to enhance um, current titles that maybe don't have RTX, um, but just look at this difference. I mean, this is amazing. This really is, this really is amazing. Um, what they are able to do with this, uh, it's pretty much AI-based intelligence, um, and it's, I, I, from what I understand, it's not just uh, using RTX to enhance the image, it's actually taking certain lines in the image, and it's almost restructuring it to look more realistic. Um, of course, I don't know exactly how this works. If it, you know, uh, it says RTX Remix is able to capture the textures, geometry, lighting, and cameras uh, thanks to the innovative custom D3 D9 runtime called the RTX Re Remix runtime. Classic games like Morrowind use the D3 D9 runtime to send draw calls, rendering instructions to the GPU. RTX Remix runtime intercepts those draw calls, interprets them into distinct assets, and reassembles those assets into an identical scene. From there, RTX Remix converts the assets and scene into the widely adopted universal scene description. Op 3D framework, which is the foundation of the NVIDIA Omniverse plat platform for building and operating custom 3D pipelines. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it is this is some extremely um, impressive technology. Uh, I would really hate <laughs> for them to keep this specifically for the 4000 series. Now, it only um, supports DirectX 8 and DirectX 9, DirectX 9 games um, with fixed function graphics pipelines. So, yeah, it's only going to support DirectX 9 and uh, DirectX 8, unfortunately. Um, but, you know... 
just the difference that this makes just from, you know, AI intelligence is just amazing. And here's another uh, image where the AI enhanced plus ray tracing. Now, as you can see, you can see these very, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not so, uh, they're not very distinct lines in this stone or whatever. Um, the AI not only adds ray tracing, as you can see right there, the reflections, um, it also enhances the lines and I guess it kind of interprets it, you know, in a way that it thinks it should look to look more re realistic. So, you know, really the difference is just, you know, astounding. Um, now it doesn't really change these harsh edges. It doesn't change these harsh, harsh edges or harsh, harsh lines. And it actually almost makes them more, more distinct and more defined. But overall, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Um, and as you can see, this is Mount Blade. Uh, I can't say I've ever played this game before, but, you know, as you can see with RTX on in the AI enhancement, it, it, it looks significantly better than the original, I guess, source material. So, yeah, for modders, this is going to be fantastic, um, is what it looks like. So, this is from... Uh, I don't know what game this is from... But regardless, if we, you know, I mean, that difference, that, uh, you know, <laughs> that's like 2005 and that's like 2018. <laughs> so uh, very, very big difference with using Remix, um, you know, and uh, I'm very excited to see what these these modders are able to do now this is actually interesting i wonder I, I wonder if they added assets to this scene because uh you know in the original picture these assets weren't there and i uh, maybe the ai did that i don't i i wouldn't imagine the ai did that unless uh, they added their own like nvidia added assets to the rendering pipeline but i couldn't imagine i i couldn't i i doubt that they would do that um but uh, here's another um, little sneak peek preview. I mean, of course, the difference, amazing. I mean, the, the, like I said, this is <laughs> one of the biggest things for the 4000 series. Um, yeah, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, if you would like more videos like this, let me know uh, down in the comments below. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.